Or no, 18 years. 19 years, excuse me. Yeah. All right, and a whole little game about us trying to use protagonist suit. Uh, kind of miss a. Uh, I'll try to see if I can use a strike Gundam next time. I'm not going to use a. It's gonna. You don't need, Gundam. You don't need to worry about it. The final stage is going to push you into the strike Gundam. Oh, okay. No, that's good. Wait, why would it put me in the strike Gundam if because it's what's gonna, being used? Because it's going to swap you between Kira and the Freedom and Mula Flaga in the strike. Oh. Well, I'll be, wait, no, you get that one again because I got the second to last one. Oh. Uh. Uh, it's well, gonna be showcased either way, so... I'll use the freedom here. Alright. I... Okay. I don't I, like the freedom. I do like the freedom, but in different ways. Like, I like its silhouette, and I like the color scheme. But I mean the way it plays. But, oh. Is it the one that has, like, the, real, the blasty shit? I think it does. Yeah, it's good anyway. Not extremely, but it can do that, sort of. Into the what? <laughs> Early morning. <laughs> that, I think they could reward that a bit better. This picture is interlaced. Yeah. You can see it on that electrical tower. So out of nowhere comes this little shithead called Asriel and his group of early 2000s Warner uh, Kids WB TV show uh, cartoon villains. That's like literally the best way I could possibly describe them. One, some they look like they're from Which like. Which one of them is Johnny Test? Yeah, I was gonna say they look like Johnny Test. They, they look like something <sighs> a background character you see in like Code Lyoko or some shit. <laughs> I know it's Cartoon Network, but bear with me for the joke. <sighs> also, Azrael just sounds like a, a name of a cartoon villain. To be honest. <sighs> Azrael is the name of a character in Soul Calibur. It is. No. Yes. Yes. The villain of uh, the thing that. Four. four. The thing that Dawson and Mel transforms into in Soul Calibur 3. And four. And the thing that you were probably thinking of at first was Azazel. And I that's was. The thing from, and that's the thing from Tekken 6. I was thinking of Azazel for a second there because it's been actual years since I've touched Soul Calibur 3. <laughs> I should play it again. At some point, maybe. I don't know. Also, hey, Azrael but, is a biblical name or something. Azrael is the name of a biblical, uh, I think, Jewish god, maybe. I'm not sure. Hebrew. He, yeah. I'm bad at this stuff. Sorry, guys. <sighs> My knowledge of the Bible doesn't extend to anything immediately out of the, out of the purview of Final Fantasy bosses. Better check the Brobel. <laughs> Let me check my Bibble. So anyway, <clears throat> the, uh, this Hebrew guy uh, rocks up with his crew uh, for the first time ever, male cyber new types. Yes. Well, not the first male cyber new type, period, but uh, yeah, pretty close to that ballpark. May as well be. Ye no. No? I stand corrected. The first... Oh, oh, what was his name? Give me a minute. CCA? No. But Ye yes, actually, the very first one. <laughs> oh man, I'm all over That's not one. what I was thinking, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> Karis Nautilus from Mobile Suit Gundam X. From After War Gundam X, excuse me. Is that a new type, really? Yes. Huh, okay. Hold on. Ooh, nice Doom Eternal background. <laughs> Anyways, well, 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 he's... He sticks with me forever because I thought he was a girl. <laughs> so, one of the things, actually, that. Um, it's interesting, especially about Azrael, despite the fact he's a little shithead. Uh, he's actually a independent faction within the uh, Earth Federation military. So he's essentially the starting of his own Titans, quote unquote. And to tie back to the more UC references, because, you know, Cyber New Types, essentially. Oh, wait, isn't that person? No, that person's not from. That person looks so much like they're from Wing, Karis Nautilus. <laughs> yeah, that's from X, but. Uh... No, you were right. The very first male uh, would have been uh, Gus from Char's Counterattack. Yeah, good Gus. Good, good boy. Anyway, <coughs> uh, let's see. I'll bring her along because oof. Someone had to. Yep. Okay. I imagine during Destiny, at one point, one of us is going to set it to Talos to Talia, and then just forget. <laughs> it's not impossible, really. Oh, this is that one. I, know, I, can, I, I can make it to this. It has beams, but not big beams. Or not the biggest beams. That right there is its best attack. 
Let's nice. see. The sliding beam. I've used this thing before, and honestly, when I was playing uh, through the story mode for the first time, like, I didn't mind using the freedom, and honestly, felt like a pretty decent improvement over the strike on them. It's not bad, necessarily, it's just middle of the road, compared to what came before and after. Now, as opposed to a lot of the DLC max. Oh, did we mention that? C doesn't have DLC in this game for some bizarre reason. It doesn't, because whereas in the last game there were five seed characters, now there's 55 seed characters, so they, yeah. don't, need, so they don't need any. The fuck, I just, what the hell just happened? He just teleports off screen for a quick second and comes down and blasts in front of him? What the fuck? Okay. He jumps up. Oh, like, off to the side? Sorry, this is like, it, there's so much visual noise with that one, I have no idea what, how to even process it, that's really strange. That's one of the other problems with the primary seed Gundams, is that there's so much going on both with their designs and the way they move, that they are completely impassable. Yeah. Now, one of the good things, though, is that, uh, the, I personally think there's some use to be had out of the freedom. Uh, a lot I of, also don't like that Muso. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of silly. It's a level two even look like, I wonder. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the frame rate, though. It's... All right, it should be good here. There it is. My peace will move. Everyone, please evacuate the battlefield as I'm literally melting everything. <laughs> oh, you know what? Even if he was non lethally targeting every single one of the mechs, there's the. He was still disabling every single one of the giant fireball, and they would not be able to escape the microwave! No. He, uh, he cuts off the legs of, uh, Izak's dual Gundam. Yeah. So it's like, okay, how is it going to sit on, uh, the floater that it's using? Because that thing's not built for ground flight. Congratulations, Kira. You doomed a, a lot of people, even though you were trying to get them all out of there. Well, to be fair, he showed up late. My so. peaceful beams! He showed up way late, so he was only going to be able to save a, a minute amount of people anyway. True. Uh, I don't know if I've been saying this or not, but Freedom, freedom Strike, Freedom Strike, I think, maybe, are also in uh, Gundam 3, so we'll get a chance to use these later on as well. This might how exorbitantly short odd. Uh, <laughs> fucking this game can be. I think only the Strike Freedom is in 3. Maybe? I swear there was at least a Justice Gun in there. Is Atherin even in? Yes, is Atherin is it. Okay. I was like, oh my god, is Atherin even in fucking playable in 3? I don't know. Yes. 3 has uh, Kira, Atherin, Shin, Luna, and... And fucking what's your pit? Lacus. Uh, <laughs> Wait, is is, is Lacus like a support thing or is she like an actual playable character? I think she's playable. She's oh playable God. in this game. Is she? Yes. For a very brief period, she is technically piloting the. <coughs> she technically pilots the Justice once. Right, she does uh, on the Strike Freedom's entry to Earth, if I remember that correctly. Yes. She's in, uh, she pilots the Justice, and she actually, not in Destiny, but in Original Seed, she actually does pilot one of the Meteors. Yeah. Because that's because it is a mobile armor into itself. Oh, Jesus. This is my air super. That's extravagant. And if you have control of it, it would actually have been pretty good. Oh yeah, during this whole exchange, Dirka did actually get captured, but he's yes. a, he's a fairly good boy because unlike he unlike was given on, the opportunity to uh, to just fucking leave, and he said, "Damn it, they were they didn't kill me. They gave me back my Gundam that I stole from them. Damn it, I have to help them." It's shown early on that there are it's very much like Xeonware are actually like good characters on the uh, on the enemy space force side. Dirka has no has no vested interest in Zaft. He's just along for the ride, and that's clear almost from the get go. Whenever you get any scenes with him, he'll yeah. do his work and he'll do it well. But he does not care about their politics at all. Which I mean, I honestly can't say there. I blame them for considering Atherin's dad. He's literally there just because his friends are there, and possibly just for a paycheck. Which honestly, I do not fault him for really. Yes and yes. There's one hand being the military industrial complex, <laughs> which we mention later. But also Destiny. Uh, but also just kind of well, there's not many other options to be had anyway, so yeah, I kinda of don't blame him really. 
There's a barrier. Here. You gotta you gotta go around it. Okay. Because there's a guy on the other side of that barrier. You gotta kill Shawnee first. I did not see this as a bad thing. By the way, very much on po uh, just visual references here to the death site. I mean, yes. I mean, yeah. <coughs> yeah, thereabouts. Eat peace. <laughs> Are we good? What the hell else could be happening here? This is Alaska. Oh, we probably gotta escape Alaska. You do. Yeah. So what's going on? I'm, we've elaborated on this before. There's a giant battle happening at Alaska because it was originally thought by the Earth Federation. That's why I just kind of keep calling about because I'm not remembering the name of him. The Atlantic it's not, it's, Federation. It's, it's not Earth. It's not Orb. They're a normal country. The Atlantic Federation. Yeah. Who also controls outer space for some reason. So initially they think that uh, Zap is going to attack the Caribbean? No, uh, it was like Hawaii or something. It was, it was, some, it was some island. But I guess at some point, uh, Zap decided to about face and just head right for the Alaskan uh, Earth space, which is a big one. Panama. Panama, that was it, yeah. Poor Tahu. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, but essentially, like, they, they decided to completely change course last minute, and somehow they managed to go from Panama all the fucking way up to Alaska, and no one noticed a thing about that <laughs> until they arrived at the doorstep, like, hey, they're attacking us and not Panama. Well, how the hell did we not know that about it sooner? I don't know. <laughs> so, because of that, uh, because I guess they might have been foreign military sources or something, I'm not sure. The Earth, Earth government decided to uh, use a new super weapon that was underneath uh, the Alaska base. The Cyclops. The Cyclops system. That sounds pretty un unassuming, doesn't it, guys? Well, no. uh, here's the thing. It's uh, It sends out giant giant ray particle rays that essentially pop people like zits and, and fries <laughs> electronics. Like, it makes them explode. <laughs> that was like, that exact description actually completely fits. Like, what happens if you, like, deep microwave something? Like, if uh, it boils water and makes it explode. That's what happens with humans that are explosive decompression. That and the Genesis laser are, are the most violent that Gundam ever gets. Like, inexplicably so. Like, what the fuck is this Akira shit doing in my Gundam? We, we see intestines and ribs pop out of people. Actual rib bones. Granted, you have to, like, stop... <laughs> like, you have to pause frame for it. But you can still see it, like, kind of periodically anyway. Well, what's this later on? Holy crap. <laughs> But just like, huh, why do we suddenly get so goddamn violent with our show all of a sudden? Because it's the early 2000s. But even then, like, obviously... That's this, pretty much it. This wouldn't have aired whatsoever on Toonami at all. These no, they, days, they, they, no those were, that was all definitely cut from broadcast. Especially back then, when it ran from, like, 4 to 6 p.m. Or <laughs> 7, actually, on the, on the East Coast, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, these days on Adult Swim, it'll, it could probably air. Maybe. Yeah, uh... If I Wonderland be... had some cutting back, it wasn't horrible. They didn't cut anything, they just mosaicked it out. <clears throat> so they would just have to mosaic those, uh, those shots, but they would be good. Yeah. Now what they might have to cut... No, they, what they would definitely have to cut is some shots from all of the reused openings that show that show the background of naked uh, Rami is floating in the background with her giant tits and big puffy nipples. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I ever saw that because I was watching the movies. No, the, no, no. I can sh I've shown it to you before. I you showed me, yeah. I can show it to you uh, after or in between. They, uh... <laughs> the silhouette is so explicit, you may as well have actually seen her fucking naked. Which I would not mind seeing Maru naked, personally speaking, but just Also, like, her huh. silhouette is like nine feet tall. Yeah. Because she has an extended uh, stomach torso area for some reason. Perspective, yo. Well, and again, this is right before, you know, Code Geass, so... <laughs> uh, Powerful, of course. Okay, but, that, but there was a reason for that, though. The original designs that were adapted for the anime came from Clamp. Yes. I can't deny that. <laughs> it's practice. I don't know. I'm just joking. <laughs> you can tell, especially during uh, Destiny, that a lot of the, the grand majority of people that worked on Destiny just went right into working on Code Geass. Yep. Because really obvious. There are a lot of uh, very similar, if not reused, animation techniques. Like, uh, in the last movie, where Athran just goes full out Suzaku, in, uh, the stadium. Yeah, yeah, the one we just watched. That is very fucking true. 
<laughs> you know, we're all this time in Code Geass is actually kind of making me kind of. It's also to... supremely Code Geass that he would go full uh, full out Suzaku and Mir would still die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are not wrong. You know, all this time in Code Geass just kind of actually want me want to make me read the manga <laughs> or original source material because Code Geass did not originally have Max in it. Code Geass was an anime first that was turned into a manga after the fact. The ad the manga adaptation of the original Code Geass, there were no mechs, it was just straight up regular warfare. And then Code Geass got like eight different manga spin-offs. That sounds right. That sounds right for something that blows up all of a sudden by under a sunrise. Nightmare of Nonali, Suzaku of the Counterattack. Oh Christ. A thousand more. Uh, Nonali in Wonderland. You know the worst thing is I've heard that one before. It uh, turned into an OVA like five or six years later. No wonder. <sighs> now I know it's, I, I definitely feel especially that uh, it's very obvious that originally it wasn't supposed to have it didn't have mechs in it because I always keep forgetting it does have mechs and what the mechs actually look like. Also, like a week ago, there was finally some announcement about the 10-year follow-up plan for Code Geass since Lelouch of the Resurrection 2019 was set up to be the start of a new 10-year plan. And apparently the next project in the lineup is Code Geass Regenesis. Okay. Because the last movie was uh, Lelouch of the Resurrection. That, uh, that does kind of add up when you put it like that. <laughs> <sighs> These two have a uh, fun conflict. And Lelouch of the Resurrection is a fun 7.5 8 out of 10. <laughs> we saw that in the theaters. We did. I was so confused by things that were happening, and you were confused by things that were happening. Because the thing is that that movie does not follow up from the anime continuity. It explicitly follows up the continuity of the trilogy of compilation films with new re-edited footage where scenes play out completely differently. Oh. Oh, we zeta that bitch too, okay. Yes. Great. And you're expected to follow up from that. See, the uh. thing that... The thing that <laughs> nice. The thing that made the Zeta directly into Shara's counterattack directly into Unicorn, the thing about that that doesn't work is... If Camille survived with no problems, why is Camille not present for Char's counterattack? Yeah. Your your plot falls apart immediately. Alright, so it's good to know that it's not just <laughs> Gundam that Sunrise likes revisionist history for. Got it. Yes. Wait, let me just do that one. He Weren't you just in Alaska? Or Oh yeah, okay, so you, me, you. Yeah, okay, yeah, this would be me. Okay. Wait. No, me. Me. You, okay. We're going up. Okay, yeah. 